Turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Christmas time's here. I want to preach a bit on the Prince of Peace. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of his increase, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. No end of peace. You get it right there? No end of peace. Amen. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Everlasting peace. Glory to God. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's pray. Uh, come to in Jesus' name. You know our problems this morning, and you know what need. Yes. That's Lord can do nothing anyhow. Lord, we'd like to be able to have all of our faculties in order, up to date, best it can be, or do whatever you want to do. I pray for today you help us a special help, Lord. Yes. Be that family of God that needs that help this morning. May we get it for them. Pray God you touch and play and program, everything going on at Bethlehem. Pray God everybody might take part in it. In Jesus' name we pray. If there's one here not saved, yeah. help God realize there's yeah. no peace in hell. No peace in their heart will ever be yeah. unless they get Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Today, Lord, may souls get serious about it once and for all and for a lifetime and forever. Make the peace calling election sure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you about the Prince of Peace. Uh, by the way, I'm going to put these plates back there on the way out, and it's a, it's a free will love offering. And I'll match everything up to $100. Be sure to do that. And uh, Prince of Peace, over in chapter 2 of Luke, over in chapter 2 of Luke, I can read a couple of verses out, out of Luke chapter 2. That's about the shepherds out there seeing that watching the flock by night. I want to get this one verse here for sure. Verse 10 says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which should be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I want you to know that today, that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. I want to talk to you first of all about number one, if I can get my eyes straight out here. Yes. About the thing going on at the time when Jesus was born. Jesus said this before he left. He said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, but I give my peace unto you. Yes. We have peace that passes understanding, the Bible says. We have joy that's unspeakable and full of glory, the Bible says. Yes. God people have a deep, settled peace that the world cannot give. Yes. You may become a millionaire and be famous, but you'll never have the peace that passes understanding so the Prince of Peace rules yeah. and reigns right. in your heart and in your life. Right. Receive Christ and let him be the boss from here on out. And you'll have peace about everything. Yeah. Nothing won't disturb you. Peace. Amen. It's everlasting peace. But at the time Jesus was born, there was taxes and tension and terrorism, terrorism and troubles of all kinds. Where Rome was, there was always war or oppression. They was either destroying people or bossing them. Rome had made everybody shiver and shake in their boots. Everybody was afraid of Rome. But about 40 years after this birth of Jesus, the Apostle Paul took a Bible and tore down the Roman Empire. Because he preached the Prince of Peace. And where the Prince of Peace is, Rome cannot abide. Amen. Shout out. The oppressor's got to go when the Prince of Peace comes in. I want to show you this very quickly. Take for Barabbas, for instance. He was maybe one of those zealots who hated Rome, yeah. stabbed Roman soldiers when he could, and stabbed, stabbed not Republicans, but Republicans when he could, and because he hated Rome, he hated the taxes, and hated the problems, and just giving the people of Israel. A Barabbas was a bad guy, but he was bad for the right person, and for the right reason, he thought. That's not the way to do it. Through prayer and supplication, we change things. God's one sets kings in order, one, he sets up the judges. He's the boss. We have failed him, so we got the wrong boss. But back to this. 
God is the one that does the setting up of kings. The Bible says that very plain. But Rome was there for a purpose. When God put Rome on the planet, every road leads to Rome, they said. God chose Rome to get the taxes out to make them all go to Bethlehem or to their hometown. That's how come Mary and Joseph went down to Bethlehem to pay taxes. So taxes ain't all bad. You've got a purpose. But Rome had made a mess of everything, and they were terrorists. Everybody feared them. Israel hated Rome. They hated the Roman yoke that was upon them. Everything was done because of the way Rome wanted it done. And so everybody had to follow the orders of Rome. But when Jesus came, he came to bring peace on the earth. Not a Roman empire. As a matter of fact, that thing's destroyed. And then, of course, it's going to be built back up after the tribulation period. But back to this. That dragon's going to raise up his head again when we have to fly. But I'm glad it ain't, around, ain't alive today. Ain't you glad going to God? But the time when Jesus was born, it was a time of turmoil and trouble and tension and taxes and trouble all over the, the planet. But number one, the shepherds, they got peace. They was out there in the night away from their families watching sheep and wolves and snakes and, and, and uh, people who would steal their cattle and steal their sheep and uh, rustlers and things. They had all kinds of enemies around them, so they had to watch their flock by night. And lo, I was watching the flock by night, a myriad, a, a heavenly host. And the only time in the whole Bible the word heavenly host is found is right here. The heavenly host honored Jesus at his birth. Yeah, yeah. Not the host of heaven, but the heavenly host honored Jesus at his birth. And here they came and they made a great uh, uh, to-do there in the skies and great light of shining and darkness. And, and the shepherds got so feared. The Bible said they were sore afraid. We had just printed up one time in a bulletin at Bethel and went out to the a uh, place where they printed it, and they said, and let me ask you a question. Does this say sore, or is this supposed to be something else? I know it's sore. If you ever steer the Holy Ghost, you'll be sore afraid too. They were sore afraid. They were so afraid they were sore. I mean, it hurt them. They could feel the tension and the test and the trouble. They could feel the pressure of being afraid to the place where they just shattered in their boots. Have you ever been under conviction? Like Sister Cheryl talked about being under conviction. Uh, holding that pew and rattling and hiding behind a songbook and trying your best not to obey God and no, you just had to give in. I mean, they were sore afraid. But then the Bible said that they found peace. The angels came and brought peace to the shepherds. When they found Jesus laying in that manger, they found peace. Amen. The prince of peace. They came in, the Bible said, wise men did. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger and they worshiped not her, not them, but him. Yes. The Prince of Peace. Yes. So the shepherds, they received a message of peace. And then number two, Joseph received a message of peace. Yes. Now Joseph was engaged to Mary. Mary was a virgin. Never had known a man, especially Joseph. He was a man of very honor. So watch this. And then he found out Mary was pregnant. And he was engaged to her. And he knew that I'm not the daddy of this thing. No, sir, I'm not. I know that much. She's been playing around with somebody. <laughs> so he was going to put away privately, divorce her. He could have had her stoned to death, but he was going to put away privately because he loved her. And so while he was in the process of doing this, Gabriel the angel spoke to him in a dream. He said, fear not, Joseph, take him to leave Mary's last spouse life. Well, that was in hers of the Holy Ghost, the Son of God. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Joseph, the first one, received the name of Jesus for the baby. Glory to God. And so Mary, Joseph found peace there. Now, if you was uh, engaged to somebody and you suspected her to be a virgin, and all of a sudden she wasn't a virgin, you had every right in the world to stone her to death and cast the first stone yourself. But he prayed about it, thought about it, meditated upon it. And while he was doing that, God spoke to his heart. And so Joseph, being the man that he was, the Bible said, did not know Mary until after Jesus was born. He said, I'm not the daddy, and I don't know why sister just sent me to be the daddy. So I'm not going to even touch her until after the baby's born. Man, you talk about a good man. Joseph was a good man. He is God's man. If he had to choose somebody to do that today, could he find anybody that would do that? Could he find a virgin to do that too? Uh, yeah. We've got to get back to serving God so there'll be somebody righteous enough 
clean enough, holy enough to God to do something with. Amen. Joseph was God's man. And uh, he went ahead and did what God told him to do and married her and was what you might call the stepfather of Jesus up through the carpenter shop until he got old enough to preach. Well, Joseph found peace in hard circumstances. Here's your fiance, she's pregnant. You ain't your daddy, you know it. That's hard time, man. I ain't never been there. I'm, I know it's hard time. I know some people have been there. That's hard time. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to move to another state. They don't know what to do. They're in a dilemma. But Joseph found peace in this dilemma. Because when he realized that God was doing it, he found perfect peace about it. Amen. God can give you peace because the Prince of Peace, he's the one who gives it to you. Amen. Mary found peace. Joseph found peace. When Mary came down to Bethlehem to have the baby, they traveled about 84 miles from where they was in Nazareth to Bethlehem. Because that's where they had to go to pay their taxes, to sign the census. That's where they had to go, the hometown of their fathers. And, and Joseph was in the house of Elizabeth, David. So he had to go to Bethlehem, the city of David. Took Mary with him, and her eight months pregnant. That's hard times. Got down there, there's no room in the inn. Had to go down to a barn, lay him in a manger, and straw and hay. Wrapped in swallowing rags. No midwife, no hot water, no cow. No Bible, all thumbs Joseph. And Jesus, the Prince of Peace, was laid in a manger. And heaven showed up. Wise men showed up. Stupid shepherds showed up. It had enough sense to follow the, the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Had enough sense to follow the angels. Had enough sense to believe God. Men and women, they found peace in times of all doubt. Yeah. Yeah. When everybody should have been throwing stones at Mary, they was practically bowing at her. Yeah. Yeah. But it was because of Jesus, not her. Yeah. Mm, I like this story. Hey. No doctor. Nobody to help. Just Joseph. And there's a donkey over there. He wasn't no good. Them sheep wasn't no good. Them chickens sitting on rats, they wasn't no good. Nobody, nothing. There was Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And there's the Son of God gave peace. Yeah. Mary and Joseph. Everybody came around. I'm glad one day I found the Prince of Peace as my Lord and Savior. Yeah. Hallelujah. That, kind of hard to upset, Brother Moore. I, I'm glad. I really am. Kind of hard to get me mixed up. I'm tickled to death with my teeth. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> then they got down there to Bethlehem, and next thing you know, the angel spoke to Joseph and said, Joseph said, take the baby and the Mary, uh, mo Mary married the mother and flee to Egypt. Because Herod wants to kill the baby. Yeah. So Joseph grabs Mary up and the baby and takes off to Egypt. Another about 80 some miles down there. Wait, and got down to Egypt. To get away from Herod because Herod wanted to kill baby Jesus. So Herod, when he found out he was betrayed, he killed all the children. Not baby, not baby boys and baby girls, but all the children. Two years and under in Bethlehem Euphrates. It's maybe about 2,000 people died, babies died. Yeah. It don't say kill the boys, kill them all. Yeah. He didn't take time to figure out which sex it was, just babies kill them. Yeah. Get back to that moment, maybe. Yeah. But Jesus, Jesus escaped. Because the angel spoke to Joseph again. Peace. I'm talking about the Prince of Peace. Here the devil brings destruction and death. Jesus brings peace. Yeah. The Prince of Peace. So they take off to Egypt. Bill asked one time, said, how did they poor and Mary and Joseph poor? How did they get down to Egypt and stay two years? They was financed by the wise men. <laughs> gold and frankincense and myrrh. Yeah. Yeah. The trip was financed. God already paid the bill for them to go down there and back. Yeah. Yeah. God leads and guides and God provides. If you'll follow him, you'll find peace that passes understanding, joy unspeakable, full of glory, and things won't worry you like they used to. That long trip, they stayed there until Herod's death, two years. But Joseph was willing to let God do his, his way. 
And Jesus came, lowly, humbly, born of a virgin. <coughs> Let me tell you something, folks. She was still a virgin when she had the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Never known a man. Now that's a miracle, ain't it? That's the whole idea. Yeah. Jesus is God's son, Emmanuel, God with us. The word made flesh, God manifested in the flesh. The very express image of the Father, God with us, that's Jesus. The name of my God is Jesus. The name of my God is Jehovah. Jehovah the Old Testament and Jesus the New Testament. Jesus the New Testament, Jehovah the Old Testament. They just one of them saints. Yes. But he was made flesh and dwelt among men. And we beheld his life like the Son of God. But we, we've got to realize that Jesus Christ is the only one can bring peace to your troubled soul. He's the Prince of Peace. So Joseph knew that he was not the father, and he knew he wasn't supposed to be. So he knew her not until after Jesus was born. He added to it. If you got something good and you can do something to make it better, do it. And Joseph kept himself away from her physically until after the baby was born. And they had uh, four more boys and, 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 and girls. <coughs> Don't say how many girls, but sisters. Jesus had sisters. After he was born, his mother had sons and daughters. Mary and Joseph had children. And the Bible said his brothers didn't believe in him until after the resurrection. Then they all went after him. In the upper room, they was with him, with Mary, in the upper room with 120 disciples. When the Pentecost came and the Holy Ghost fell, they was there. The Bible said they worshiped with Mary. They didn't worship Mary, they worshiped with Mary. You'll catch that in a minute. But the fact is, Mary found peace. Joseph found peace. The shepherd found peace. Simeon, an old priest down at the temple. God had promised him in a dream that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple to be circumcised. He shed blood before he ever got to Calvary. He was a Jew. He fulfilled all the law and all the prophets. Down to circumcision, even. Yeah. That's how humble he came before you. Hallelujah, God. Amen. Jesus, my Jesus. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> the words I have. Yeah, Simeon. Mary came in with the baby, and Simeon took him, circumcised, lifted him up like this, and he said, Now has thy servant seen the salvation of Israel. Now let thy servant die. He had peace when he died because he found the Messiah. Yeah. He had peace when he died because Christ brought that peace to him. He fulfilled the prophecy, fulfilled the promises of God. He'll always fulfill the promises. He'll never let you down. He'll always yeah. fulfill the promises. Yeah. And Simeon died knowing that he'd seen the salvation of Israel, the Messiah, the Son of God, born of a virgin, fulfilling all the law. He was the perfect son of God. He was the perfect son of man. He was the God man and the man God. He was God with us. And thank God because of him we can be with God. The Prince of Peace. Jesus brought peace to old Simeon. Well, Jesus brought peace for the future with Simeon. Simeon said, this is him. This is, this is the Messiah. Our whole future is taken care of now. Since he came, we have everlasting life in a place called heaven. Jesus the Messiah. The word Messiah means Christ. We call him Jesus Christ. The Jews have a shock. The Muslims, they've also got a Messiah. They call him Mahadid. That Mahadid ain't worth 15 cents. Because he didn't resurrect from the dead. Yeah. Jesus did. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is coming back. Amen. If you're looking for a Muslim Mahdi, he, he ain't coming. Forget about that. Amen. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is, is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He's the Prince of Peace. And he can bring peace to your heart and your life. Amen. If you're troubled, nervous, anxious, fretting about everything, just forget about all that. Just say, Jesus, I'm yours. Take care of it. I saw a thing on a mirror one day. It said, uh, down the corner, it said, uh, uh, don't worry about it. I don't need your help. I've got this. God. 
That's peace, ain't it? <laughs> Shout and have it. Just let God have it. <laughs> Ready? It brought peace to old Simeon for the future. Let me say this. If you worry about tomorrow, you lose a piece of today. Jesus said that. He said, take no thought of tomorrow, for the cares of today are sufficient thereof. People worry about things that might come and lose things that are here. They lose the peace of the present by worrying about the future. Simeon said, I know the future now. I know everything's going to be all right. When he saw the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, he knew everything going to be all right. Shout that. Fear no evil in the battle shadow of death. Jesus said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's a promise of peace to the future. If Jesus is with me, I ain't scared of nothing. Nobody and everything. I'm telling you, Jesus brings peace. And you don't worry about it. Just yeah. go ahead and live for God. And have a good time. Shout the victory and let the devil pout in the corner. <laughs> Number four, peace in spite of the devil. Yeah. Now, Herod decided he was going to kill Jesus. Let me show you something about that very quickly. Herod heard about Jesus being born and he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. When Herod got mad, heads rolled. When Herod got mad, head, people lost their heads. When people got upset, Herod got upset. And Herod got upset, the people got more upset. When something happened Herod couldn't, couldn't solve, he went to pieces. Let me tell you, he killed his own wife, Mary Ann, and the two sons, Aristobulus and Alexander. And then he killed the, the, the son of his other wife, Doris. And a painter. I mean, just, he, he, he didn't, if you said something wrong, he just killed you. One man said this. A Roman governor said this. He said, it'd be better to be Herod's dog than to be Herod's son. Quote. Herod was just a crazy man who was afraid somebody was going to take his throne. Take his throne. Take his, well, he killed him. Keep him getting it. And those babies all died because one man was afraid of a baby. <laughs> A grown man scared of a baby. <laughs> the devil scared yeah. of a baby. Yeah. Yeah. The Roman Empire scared of a baby. Yeah. My God, I'm feeling something. Yeah. The devil shivers in his boots, if you please, when the name of Jesus broadcasts through hell. When the name of Jesus broadcasts through the world. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, including his, as the Bible says. Amen. The whole crowd scared of a baby. I'll get back to that in just a second. Watch this. Herod was a unisex supporter, a pervert promoter, and an abortion clinic operator. He didn't care if he was a male, female, or a gender isolator. He just killed you anyhow. You just happened to be the wrong age. Are we in that situation today in the world? If we're just yeah. in a certain age, we don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. We've got these categories. Yeah. And if you're in this category, we don't want you. Yeah. Yeah. God wants you. Yes. Jesus <laughs> sent his son in the yeah. form of a baby yeah. to condemn the whole world. Because of one little child. Yep. Things got upset when Jesus was born. But things found peace too. Yeah. So you can either get upset or you can find peace. According to what you do with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Herod, Matthew 2, 18 said there was an estimated 2,000 babies died. Children, says children. Two years and under. Don't say boys, says children. Two years and under. Don't say girls, boys, says Children, two years and under. Yeah. About 2,000 babies died in his abortion clinic, boys and girls. All those mothers and fathers weeping. But oh, look at it. This is the way, if you please. Just wait a minute. The devil's crowd was killing babies, killing their children, mistaking them for the Christ. 
I don't see babies die. But if it gives God glory and gives God praise for our children to die for a good cause, it shouldn't be all bad. Why would we send our men to fight battles and come back with legs, limbs missing and legs missing, arms missing, yeah. dead? They died for a cause. Yeah. Yeah. These babies died yeah. not knowing the left hand from the right hand. But God used that for a cause. Yeah. Yeah. How would you like to go to heaven without sinning? <laughs> Babies go to heaven without sinning if they die in infancy. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible said they're angels. Listen now, I'm talking about these dead babies that died because they were mistaken for Jesus. They weren't Jesus. But they were killed because they thought they might be Jesus. I was let somebody mistake me one time for a Christian. Somebody say, he, he might even be one. <laughs> Tickle my soul to death. It tickled me to death. Somebody mistook me for a Christian. <laughs> but they killed these babies, mistaking them for Christ. The Bible said there are angels. Jesus said it. He said there are angels. Behold the face of my Father which is in heaven forever. That baby killing Borton Bunch, they think they're killing little babies to make money off their part, body parts and things. But they're just filling heaven full of innocent voices. I like to scoot back among them. And sing with that choir yeah. that's never seen. Oh. Yeah. 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 The Bible said perfect, pure, and perfect praise comes from the mouth of babes and sucklings. They've never sinned. I bet they can sing very pretty. Yeah. 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 Herod thought he was getting rid of Jesus. He's just filling up heaven. The abortion cloud thinks they're doing something. But God's in control of him. Them little old babies dying down there in Bethlehem, you afraid to? He marked every one of them. He knew every one of them by name, by number, by everything. He knew them. Somebody said, well, if he knew them, then he knew what they would have been if they hadn't killed them. He knew what they, he knew what they was going to be when he killed them. Amen. You'll catch that in a minute. He knew they were going to die. Somebody said, well, some of them might have been lawyers and doctors. He knew this was going to die. Yeah. He knew you are going to die. Yeah. So I thought, oh, he could have been a great man, but he died. You die saved, amen. What a blessing to think that Satan wants to kill your child in order to stop Christianity. I want to read you something. If I can find it, I know I've got it here somewhere. Christians in Defense of Israel. That's the name of this year's book. This Man who is a jihadist, that means a, a murderer, a killer. Yeah. He said, quote, your son killed Jews. A bloody, drenched, homeless thug bragged to his parents in a call from Israel. Quote, I killed Tim with my own hands, Dad. With my own hands. Here is a jihadist Muslim, Hamas, who killed 10 Jews just because they were Jews. Mm. Women, old men, and babies. But they were Jews. Now, why in the world can a world get so bad that just because you're not like me, i got to kill you? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we send missionaries to them. They send mercenaries to us. Yeah. We love them, try to get them saved. They hate us, won't kill us because we're not like them. But there's people who actually brag on killing Jews because they're Jews for no other reason. Yeah. Like Hitler, he killed six million Jews that was unarmed. No guns, no knives, no nothing. He killed them because they're simply Jews. And days coming, they'll kill Christians simply because they're Christians. Yeah. The Muslims and the Brotherhood. The Hamas and the Brotherhood would love to kill all Christians, all Jews, and all capitalists. 
And you can ask them, they'll tell you they will. Yeah. Give them a chance, they will. Yeah. But the fact is, Herod was of the devil, killing innocent little babies. And anybody who kills innocent people is of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Even they call us the great Satan. Yeah. Want you to notice that today. One time down at the Boyce Baptist Center, I was preaching down there at 17th Main Street with the Home Mission Board. Dr. West was over it. Over it. <coughs> Made $56 a month. Plus worked at the gas station, preached at night in the old tent. But I, work, I, was there, I slept there on an altar that I built myself with foam rubber and red velvet over it. Oh, it's beautiful. I slept on it like a bed with the Bible for a pillow. Got dreams and wondering. It wasn't no rock, but it's a good, good dream anyway. And anyway, I woke up one morning, there's a bunch of noise outside. It's just right after daylight. I looked out the window, and this guy had a knife at this other guy's throat. And, and he was in his car, had him around the neck, going to cut his throat. I said, hey, hey, leave that man alone. He turned around and said, well, I'll just let him go and cut your throat. I said, go ahead. You'll go to hell and I'll go to heaven. He let that guy go and got took off in his car just flying. He said, you ain't scared of me? I said, not one bit. Now, he come down to the fence there, and he come to the fence, start crying. And he was the son of a preacher from Mumfordville, Kentucky. He had come to Louisville and got swallowed up in the punk crowd. You know, the pub bunch, the bar crowd. He got swallowed up in that. And all he could do is drink now. Drink, 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 drink. He's going to kill this guy because he owed him $5. Or $5. Yeah. So he had prayed with him, read the Bible to him. He got to drive with God and said, I'm going back down home. I'm going to get me a job on the farm and be what it used to be is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. The man was going to kill a guy over $5. He's going to kill me because I interfered with this five dollars. One time at the, the high five gas station, the corner of Great Lane Yonder and Preston. There used to be a high five gas station right there. And I, I worked there at night on, on night third shift. And every morning at two o'clock I had preaching. Had the ugliest bunch of crowd you ever seen in your life. <laughs> Man, they had dope heads and punks and drunks and they had just one but it was a gang. And on the back of their jacket a oh, blue jean, you a blue jean jacket. And on the back had a, 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 a Flames coming up like that, and a hand coming up out of the flame, flame with a nail in the middle of blood running down the flame. It had hell raisers, Louisville, Kentucky. And I said, son, I wouldn't wire that to a dog fight. Yeah. Oh, that represents the hand of Jesus to try to save your soul from hell. That represents Jesus trying to keep you out of hell. And you're wearing them back to your coat. And he said, well, I ain't scared of nothing like that. I ain't scared. I ain't religious. I said, well, you, you, your coat says you are. For the devil. But anyway, time went on, and and I preached to him every night. And he kept coming back to him and his girlfriend. One night there's another gang come in from another part of Louisville. Man, they was going to have a fight right down in the parking lot where I was supposed to be the boss. <laughs> and I helped the guy change a tar. I had a tar tool in my hand. And, and I thought, oh, I, I can't hit this guy with this tar tool. So I was backing up trying to get away from him, tripping over the, over the curb. And finally he quit going after me. And jumped in the car and they, they put his hands over the, the license plate as it got up so they got to the road. Then they would see the license plate where I couldn't get it. Uh, crazy bunch. <laughs> and an hour or two went by, and that guy and his girlfriend came back, and, and uh, I got in the front seat of their car, and they were sitting in the back seat, left the Lord, and he got out, took that jack off, threw it in a pile of oil, old greasy oil. This other guy grabbed it, said, I'll wire the blank, the blank thing if you want. And he put it on. There's always be a devil to take your place. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You get saved, there's plenty more of them out there. Fill your place yeah. at the bar. Yeah. You quit drinking, they'll step up. Yeah. You quit selling dope, they'll take your place. Yeah. You quit shooting up, they'll shoot up. There's always going to be a devil out there to take your place. Yeah. But peace comes when you receive the Prince of Peace. Yeah. 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 It works. Always has, always will. I preached in Boone's Park one time down West End. I had a good crowd. Me and uh, uh, Nett Johnson and a girl named Sister Jean. They come from Southern Baptist Seminary and we was down on, on a street corner in Boone's Park. Amen. I was up in the park where the tombstones was. They was down on the sidewalk and out tracks and singing a song. Had a good time. Had a good crowd too. And across the street was a bar. Caddy corner. The guy standing outside listening. One of them had on <laughs> shorts. No shirt. Big belly. <laughs> had a pint of whiskey. Blackjack and a pistol. He come walking across that. He said, I know more about the Bible than you do. 
I said, quote the Ten Commandments. He said, well, I know them. Tell me about them then. Tell me, well, name them. He swung it to the black kid of that Billy Stick and they run. Pulled out his drunken big line with liquor. Waved that pistol around, stuck back in the back. Flip flops. They had flip flops, pants, short breeches, and no shirt. Uh, he was a sight, but he knew more about the Bible than I did, though. I guess Mom took him to church when he was a little kid, you know, and that's all religion he ever got. Well, he couldn't name none of them. Now, I cut loose on preaching hell, hot, and heaven sleep. And Miss, Miss Jean and uh, Annette John Louis got in the car and broke the windows up and knocked the door. Oh, 63, 63, four, uh, 63 Chevrolet Station, like that's what it was. Now, I was going to have me a good time giving the devil fist. I didn't care about them. Didn't have wife, didn't have children, didn't have nothing. Just, just going to heaven. Anyway, went back across the street. I couldn't do nothing with it. <laughs> Friend, the world steps aside for a man who knows where he's going. Yeah. It's time for God's people to let the world know they've got some peace whether they got it or not. Amen. Wish I could let that old boy to Jesus. He's too drunk to know which, which way to walk. The fact is, God will see you through it, friend. But there's folks who don't like you because you're a Christian. Herod wanted to kill Christians. Even before they became Christians. Just because they looked like Christ. Maybe the same age of Christ. Born in the same city of Christ. A, a, a very possibility that there might be a Christian. Kill them all! Kill them all! Saw a sign on the back of the car one day that said, Kill them all! Let God separate them. That's stupid. <laughs> we love sinners. Because we was one time was chiefest among them. Well, I'll get on off that stuff there. I pray one more than I tell you. I preached on TV one time. And I preached on <laughs> Sodomites raping angels. That didn't go very well. When I got home, my wife was screaming, rise out, squalling. I said, honey, what world's what, what matter? She said, I'm glad you made it. It made it work. She said, I got a phone call saying that they're going to kill you before you got home. I guess they backed down on it. But friend, I'm not saying put your life in danger. What I'm trying to say is Herod killed them babies because he thought they was going to take his authority <laughs> His power, his wealth, his riches, his popularity. The devil don't like Christianity because we're going to stand on his head. <laughs> Read your Bible. We're going to stand on his head. Drive it home. Shout that. Well, I love the Prince of Peace because he delivered me from fear. Fear hath told me. They that fear not made perfect in love. For perfect love casts out fear. That's what old John said, amen. Yeah. Back to this. I'm having fun. I don't know about you, Gordon. Yeah. Give them devil fits. <laughs> <laughs> well, why did God say seven times more about hell than he did heaven? He knew what he was talking about. Yeah. Perhaps there's a nifty crib, chair, bed at your house this Christmas. Do you have peace about that? Do you have peace about it? I'm telling you, we can have peace in our heart if we win our loved ones to Jesus before they die and go to hell. The devil wants their children. Ask Moses. Ask Jesus. The devil wants your children. Don't let him get them. Well, all babies, even the Islamic babies, go to heaven at the rapture. Abortion is a sin, but God makes it a makes a fool out of the devil every time. Yeah. Yeah. Last of all, Prince in times peace, the Prince of Peace in times of sin. I'll just stagger through this the best I can because eyes is about shot. Peace in times of sin. First of all, the Prince of Peace washes away all sin. All your past is under the blood. I love that because I got some terrible past. I ain't going to tell you nothing about it. It ain't none of your business. It's under the blood. But God took me from that. And I still ain't much. 
I ain't that. It's going to take me to that. When he gets done with me, I'll be like Jesus. The Bible says so. But the, he takes care of your sins. All your past is washed away under the blood. And God said, I'll never bring it up again. He ain't never going to miss it. And I ain't never going to miss it. And you ain't never going to know. Well, I come a long way, baby. He washes away all sin. Puts all your past in the depth of the sea. Remembers it no more. He brings it up again. But he forgives it. He forgets it forever. Psalm 51. Sin destroys the peace of mind and soul. The reason people today don't have peace of mind and their souls all jittery, they just need to lay it down to feed the Prince of Peace and let it live. Hey. He can handle it. You can't. You proved that by all the pills you bought. He can handle it. Let him take it. The Prince of Peace. Watch the way he sins. The devil and sin destroys the peace of your mind, peace of your soul. Forgiveness brings peace and goodwill. Jesus said one day to an old beggar sitting beside the road and to a blind man too, and to a guy who had palsy for all of them. He said, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. Yes, thee. he did. Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. Yes, thee. He did. Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. Thee. I'm telling you, one night Jesus spoke to my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, peace, you can't, you can't buy peace. No. If you could, Zacchaeus would be the richest guys in the world. But you can't buy it. No. Pure poppers be the richest people in the world, but you can't buy it. It comes to a deep cell of peace with Jesus Christ. Yeah. A conversion, a born again experience. If you got peace about sin, peace about judgment, peace about hell, you've got something that's priceless. Priceless. What would you give in exchange for your soul? If you own the world, the Bible says. You couldn't buy this. I got peace in my soul today. I might be learning the bat tomorrow, but today I got peace. Yeah. Yeah. I might come down the all time before I go to bed tonight. I don't know. But right now, I'm walking tall in Jesus. Yeah. Peace that passes understanding. Yeah. Joy unspeakable, speaker, full of glory. You start talking about my Jesus, you're, you're lighting my fire, baby. Yeah. Yeah. He's my king, my prince of peace. Yeah. Let's have a song or something. You might want